Hello, I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to paint Abbey Road and just a little tutorial on leather painting in general. So I'm starting off preparing the leather with a leather preparer and deglazer. This is going to lift any coatings or dirt, residue, whatever on the leather, but make sure to test it like a little swatch test before to make sure that you're not going to lift any of the leather um, dye or color itself. Next, after that dries, I'm going to just go in with a really light colored Sharpie. I know this isn't the best method, but this is just all I had. You can use chalk, um, marker, whatever, just go right in with the paint. But I'm just going to use this to make sure I have a perfect square for my outline and to really block off shapes, form, images. Um, that's going to help me with the spatial awareness of this painting. The ruler is super helpful, especially because I am doing just a 12 inch by 12 inch exactly record size. And I'm actually going to be looking at my record of Abbey Road while I paint this so that the dimensions are the exact same. Um, I'm not having to scale up or down on anything. I can just take measurements from the album and then apply it straight to the jacket drawing that I'm doing. Now I'm going in and I'm actually starting with John Lennon. I'm just going to outline his suit and his head, try to get the um, directions of each body part down, like the movement of the legs, how far away they are from each other, each person, um, and then also the crosswalk um, lines in the road. Those are probably the most iconic part of this album cover. So I want to make sure that they're the right size, that they're in the right spot, that they're not going to be oddly placed or anything like that. I'm here drawing George Harrison, trying to get the jeans and the feet correct. Um, and then like the arm is kind of like in a weird spot. I didn't really draw it correctly and I actually do go in when I'm painting and kind of fix some of these mistakes that maybe I didn't notice during the initial sketch. I'm also going to do some of the cars and uh, maybe the sidewalk on the side um, just so that I have any, everything in relation to each other is proportional. Going in with Paul McCartney, I love how he's rocking the barefoot look. So iconic. Ringo Starr. And I noticed that when I did Ringo Starr, I kind of did him dirty with his sketch. He's kind of slanted off to the side, but again, when I go in with the painting, I noticed that I made that mistake and I fixed it in the painting, so it's no big deal. These are just rough starting points. So when you're finished with your sketch, here's how mine looks. It's not perfect, but I'm just going to go in and start laying down the layers of paint. Um, when I'm starting, I'm mainly going to be paying attention to places that have really high value. So anything that's white or very lightly colored in the painting, I'm just going to start to build up the paint in these areas. This is important because the paint is somewhat thin compared to normal traditional acrylic paints. Um, the white layers, I mean, especially if you're working on a jacket that's maybe black or leather that's darker colored, it's going to take a lot more layers of white than you're used to applying on a canvas. Since this coat is tan, I did probably like four layers of white, I would say, before I went in with the actual color of the crosswalk, which is kind of a cream off-white color. So I'm just building it up, building it up, and layering. In my opinion, it's important in any painting that you're doing to build up slowly and evenly. For something like this, where it's going to be on a jacket, um, I want the paint to be as even across the surface as possible. I really don't want clumpiness or parts that are textured. It's just not going to be very flattering once the entire painting is done and completed. Um, I'd rather build it up slowly and gradually. That way it looks super even and nice and neat. Um, I didn't do a perfect job going in here. I mean, I definitely could have spent more time making it nicer on the edges, but for right now, it's not too big of a deal. It's about just building up that coverage for the meantime. 
As far as brushes to use, right now it's not too important. We are working with some lines, so a flat brush is ideal, a small flat brush. Um, so that's kind of what I'm using is a small flat angle brush. Um, and this is honestly my favorite brush to use pretty much all the time. I'm not a huge fan of changing up my brushes for every little thing. I find that these small flat brushes work well for pretty much everything. Um, now I'm going in with the sky, again building up a white there where I see there's going to be like a pale pastel blue sky. So it's going to take a few layers. I did a layer of white and then going in with a layer of blue next. Um, and then after going with this layer of blue, I'm definitely going to go in with an additional lighter color of blue. I found that that's a really easy way to kind of make a color pop more as if you do a darker shade of blue and then a lighter shade of blue over it you don't have to do as much build up with the white so that's kind of a nice little trick next i'm going in with the road the pavement um i didn't want to do full coverage on this especially since the road isn't like a solid black color it looks like it has texture there's some lighter color beaming through and that lighter color beaming through matches the tan coat really well. So I just left it there for now. And then just blocking in the darkness of the trees. I'm starting to mix some green colors and go in with some foliage over on the left hand side. And that's really fun to see it peeking through because really it's not a lot of work to get really nice results. I'm just going in with a very detailed tiny brush and doing little dots like stippling for the leaves. Doing it in various green colors, that way it doesn't look flat and it looks like it has dimension and also maybe there's different plants and trees involved in this foliage. So that gives it a nice little look. And also doing kind of the same thing with the blue color, uh, letting some sky peep through the branches. And then the buildings just kind of getting a little base on them. Nothing too serious right now. When you're going dark on top of light, be sure to be confident with your paint strokes because it's really hard to cover up a dark color like black once you start going in with it. You're going to have to do multiple layers of white. Um, now I'm going in on George Harrison, kind of getting his basics down on his outfit and his skin tones. I love how that pops already. And then a cream little Volkswagen bug there. I love how they included this car in it. I think it's just so iconic. So 1970 London. I love it. Liverpool, whatever. <laughs> and I'm kind of just picking and choosing a spot to go off of. So I'm going on the left hand side and just kind of doing everything in that area letting it dry, and then moving gradually towards the right. I'm going in with some darker shading around the road, making the crosswalk pop, making it look like there's some tire marks in the road, some different value and texture going on there. Now I'm going in with the crosswalk color, the cream color that I want it to be. So I'm going to make sure that, that coverage is built up that the lines are even and smooth, and I'm going to use that color on John Lennon's suit as well. Paul McCartney's suit was pretty easy. I just used grayscale to start off with, and same thing with Ringo Starr. I just did it black for now, and then I'm going to add highlights to it later. And then the opposite for Paul McCartney, I kind of did a medium tone, and then going in with the highlights and shadows afterwards. I'm kind of being loose with the folds in the fabric for now just trying to get direction adding white on top of john lennon's suit for the highlights and then i'm doing something kind of different for the road texture i'm kind of painting on the highlights with a cloth or you could do it with a sponge to get some texture so it looks like gravel or um, pavement excuse me um, just to give it a little bit more dimension and some realistic touches to it now I'm just kind of working up the base that I did on their outfits for everybody, starting to do a little bit of the face work, um, building up highlights and shadows. And I kind of just do that gradually. I start with like medium tones, work in a little bit of shadows, work in some highlights. And I typically just use a couple different brushes for this. I'll have like a lighter color brush and a darker color brush. That way colors don't get contaminated 
and I'll just sort of keep uh, working between the two with different brushes. Now I'm going in with the foliage on the right hand side, adding in darker colors over a forest green kind of color, just doing black shadows with it. And then just kind of picking and choosing from here where to go with details. I just kind of pick an area and go for it to finish everything up. Adding some shadows and highlights, shadows and highlights. <laughs> It's important to get your cool tones and your warm tones correctly when doing shadows and highlights. That's really how your painting is gonna pop. Typically for shadows, you want them to be cooler toned and typically for highlights, you want them to be a little bit warmer toned. That's just naturally how we see shadows in natural light sunlight. For the faces, this was so difficult, trial and error. I started over and kind of like messed up a bunch of times, but like Bob Ross said, mistakes are just a jumping off point. Happy little mistakes can always be fixed. Now I'm just going in with the final highlights on the tree with the foliage. And this is my favorite part of the painting because it just feels like the life of it kind of started to show through and it felt like Abbey Road finally. So here's how it turned out. I'm very proud of it. I think it turned out lovely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking for more content like this. Thank you.